What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. I'm your host, Jordan Jones. I am so excited for this interview today, you guys. I I rarely fangirl, okay? And I'm really trying to keep myself together, all right? Okay, I actually fangirled really hard. Let me say one story real quick. I fangirled really, really hard when I... Hmm. Okay, actually, a lot of times. I used to be that, that girl that was invited to all the red carpet events, you know? And I would be like invited i would be walking the carpet but then i'd wait at the end to take pictures with everybody okay but okay i met rihanna one time that was that was pretty like that was pretty crazy i think i like had a tear in my eye or something (laughs) but today this this person that i'm sitting here with you guys i absolutely i look up to her i love her music she's such a like great person i i've been talking to her on like dms and i'm like oh my god she's so cool i just want to be like her i want her to be my mom i want her to be my sister i want her to be my best friend i want her to be all of the above today i'm sitting with ash say hi hello oh my gosh what an intro what an intro you guys oh that's so sweet you deserve a huge intro i'm so excited to be sitting here with you today oh i broke a nail everyone thank you say hi oh no ow but, oh my gosh, <laughs> we have so much to talk about. First of all, thank you wow. so much for coming. Oh my gosh, thank you for having me. You, it was such a no-brainer. <laughs> when you were like, do you want to do this with me? I was like, oh, yeah, call me whenever, when. Tell but me. you said that you are so busy, you're drowning. So I'm what drowning. is, you have so much going on right now. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, when do you sleep? Oh, man. You know, it's funny is I'm so tired. There's so much going on, but I'm still in bed by 930. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm like, no, and because I, I wake up at like five. Oh my gosh. Nearly every morning. I go to sleep at that time. So <laughs> I bet you do. Oh my God. I don't know. Like, like parties are slowly coming back yep. and like safely. And yes, I've, I've been invited to like three parties in the last week. And I just am like, I don't know how I'll survive. I'll literally, I'll fall into pieces if I go to these things. I picked one and I was, I was so miserable the next day that I was like, I. I, I'm a grandma now. I can't yeah. party. COVID's made me a grandma. Yeah. See, my friends in LA, they make me drink a Red Bull at like 10 <laughs> or 11. And I am wired, baby. I'm oh like, let's God. go. But today Seriously. I was like, you know what, Jordan? You have a dentist at 1040 in the morning. And then you have a podcast with your legend, your icon. You are going to sleep. <laughs> you are going to sleep early. But Aww, <laughs> I was nice. like, but we're here. She walked her dog. We, we are here. And right now. What is going on in your day-to-day life? Because obviously you just released a huge album. You're planning so many things in the future. But mm-hmm. what is going on like right now? Right this second. Other than um, like <laughs> podcast one, Jordan Jones. What the uh, I'm telling other you. Other than this, no, this is the most important thing I've yes, done. Yes, all week. Since the album came oh, out. Okay, okay, that's better. <laughs> um, you know, it's just a million, there's a million shoots. And yeah. um, we're working on uh, the next music video. I was just album. about to ask that. Oh, dude! Um, all the creative stuff. I'm. I run the ship, um, and I really. I, you can almost tell. I think when that's an artist separa- isn't in charge. Yeah. That's what separates you 100. Like. percent I just feel. I mean, you look at someone like Billy, and you know she's like she is driving yeah. the car. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just, yeah, it's really important for me to be in charge of all that. It does like t- 10x the pressure and the responsibility. And yeah. so if it sucks, it's my fault. Yeah, because well, it's like all it will ever my suck, shoulders. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully it never sucks. But um, yeah, so we're shooting videos. Um, I am YouTube's artist on the rise as of like a month or two ago. Thank you very much. And so we, um, we, we need we need a full round of applause for that. <sighs> wow. Okay. Goals. Okay. Continue. <laughs> yeah. So we've been shooting. The last two days have been like twelve-hour shoot days Damn. for for that, which is. Great, and they did it on my schedule. We had like a nine a.m. call time to like seven, and I was like, "Ooh, that's I in can bed do that. by nine thirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So much better. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just a million things, and and yeah. I feel I'm probably more tired than I need to be because I'm in the driver's seat with all the creative and like. Mm-hmm interviews and you know half these interviews sometimes like my manager could be doing for me and it's yeah. like I, uh, bleh, I yeah. hate that no yeah I need to be doing it yeah it's important yeah I totally get that like when I when I was doing like tons of interviews you know way back when I was 
relevant, okay? Um, <laughs> Get out of here. But, like, I, sometimes, like, they would just all ask the same questions. Oh, yeah. And I would just, like, copy and paste from, like, old interviews sometimes, like, change a couple things. It's really bad. But, like, <laughs> it does... It does get, like, really overwhelming, but there is something about totally just, like, okay, it's overwhelming to the part where you have to answer, like, all the texts, all the emails about, like, specifics on, like, the video shoots and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But then, like, you also have, like, social media on top of it now. It's not just, like, the the behind-the-scenes work, but that takes up so much time. But then it's also promoting your songs, DMing people back. Like, I mean, you answered my DM. Like, you're, you're, like, you're very active, and you Mm -hmm. are... It's not just behind the scenes work, and you're doing both. When like a lot of people in the industry are just doing like the, uh, like pick one that they really yes, like. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the social media bit of it is an mm-hmm. interesting piece of the puzzle because it's like I don't want anyone else running it for me, yeah. and yet it can be one of the most sort of like draining yes. bits of because I'm I make music. That's yeah. my job. Like yeah. that's that's what I'm good at. I'm not you know <laughs> I'm not a model I'm not a photographer you know so social media stuff can get complicated yeah um but I am a creative in which you know that does play into it so yes I have a really complicated love-hate relationship with like you know Instagram and, and TikTok and on all of it and what are you more a fan of of the social media apps Oh, I don't know. I there is something about I just fo- photos are so engaging to me. So I love I just love Instagram. Dang. Oh, I would probably go first Instagram, but TikTok's like coming up on a, oh, quick, it is. a quick second. Oh, it for is. Me. I, more so me watching people's videos than yeah. me making them. I'm such 100%. an idiot. I am like not. I don't know how. I think I have like a million followers on TikTok. <laughs> Why? Like, I don't do anything funny or anything interesting (laughs) ever. And my videos, like, they do fine. But I'm like, why I should not have a million followers. But, like, who am I? Only, like, the freaking biggest artist on the charts right now. But, like, doesn't matter. I'm nobody. Yo, you, (laughs) no, you have your TikTok game under wrap. I swear to God. Every time I see you on there, I was like, I just want to dance like Jordan. Am I on your For You page? Yes. I am so flattered right now. Can we You're, make a TikTok after this? Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you are you are like on your sh- Oh my goodness. That is a compliment. Yeah, that well that done. is a compliment right there. Well, <laughs> well I, I'm like, well. What do I do after that? I'm going to, you know, turn back the compliments right back to you because, you know, it's about <laughs> you right now. So, That's I want to talk about how I found out about you. But let me just tell you that my boyfriend knew who you were before I did. Oh, no. Did you hate that? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, like but, but now it's fine because, like, I have just... Okay. So, um, by the way, I did not fact check this, but obviously, like, I'm pretty sure he's not dumb. Um, but he said, <laughs> he said that he saw you perform probably, like, 2017, Whoa. 16, 15, maybe, at the Troubadour with Love. Whoa. Did you open for Love? I did. I played, like... I opened at the Troubadour for, like, three artists before I headlined it. I was just touring forever. Um, yeah, I opened for Lau. What's funny is Lau, I, Lau, Lau. Lau, Lau. Lau. Yeah, so so much cooler. Uh, <laughs> um, I, yeah, I opened for a fun, fun story yes. about that show. Yes. Um, I was married. Mm-hmm. During that show, mm-hmm. and my boor- boyfriend that I'm currently with now, mm-hmm. he was also at that show, Yay. but he was blacked out, drunk. Love so that. he was blacked out, and I was married, and that's like technically the first time that we probably met, but neither of us remember because we were both at that show, and then we connected on that like year years later when we actually met. And he was like, "Wow, how how, how much different life was? You were wow. married, and I was drunk." <laughs> That is, see, oh, weird. that is, that is really, really crazy. And I want to mention something like about that, like whole, I've, I know everything about like the marriage and everything. And then like this new guy and what's crazy and like sad and twisted, but amazing is that that is how you make the best music. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Life you, trauma. Yes. <laughs> and because it's all so relatable. I mean, people oh. like people just get it but like it sucks obviously but it's just like dang 
when you look at like Taylor Swift going through like all these people, it's like, dang, mm. look at her music. Like, look at the stories. Look at, and then like being so open and everything. Like everything that your new album like has and everything. Like I just like, relate so much, or I'm mm. just like absolutely jamming out. But how I found out about Thanks. you was I'm so late to the. <laughs> I'm I'm so new on the Ash Train. It's it's really bad, <laughs> but. I was at the premiere of To All the Boys. What? And your song played in it. Uh -huh. And I got out my phone in this movie theater, shazammed it, added it to my thing. Wow. And I have never, ever, I'm I, for some reason, I'm not a soundtrack person. I'm not a, oh, there's a song playing in the movie. I'm going to get out my phone. I what never What song do that. is this? But that was one of the first songs I've ever been like, Wow. And and it was not my style at all at the time. I'm so like hood rap. Like I am so hood rap. And I was just like, that's Wait. the music I love to really make. I just don't put the, put it out. <laughs> Me too, girl. Hood rap music. But literally, I was just like, dang, like I am changing. But literally, ever <laughs> since like that song, I literally have I have no more rap. Like my wow. my complete style like shifted I've to this. I've changed you. You've changed. I've corrupted you, you yes. to sad singer songwriter music. <laughs> No. I'm like, am I, wait, am I sad? You're like, am I upset about life? Did I get married and divorced when I wasn't looking? We're all trying to eat better, but healthy breakfast doesn't have to be boring. That's why Magic Spoon has the amazing flavors that you love, but without all that bad stuff. It comes with zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Plus, only 140 calories a serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free, a.k.a. Jordan Jones loves it. <laughs> Their variety pack includes cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. My favorite is the fruity. By the way, mixing cocoa and peanut butter tastes exactly like a peanut butter cup, aka my boyfriend's favorite. Right now, go to magicspoon.com slash Jordan, that's J-O-R-D-Y-N, to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code Jordan at checkout to save $5 off your order. That's J-O-R-D-Y-N. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash Jordan and use code J-O-R-D-Y-N to save $5 off. Thanks, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. I want to talk about moral of the story because that's sure. like, you know, that's like your your crown. That's like your, your big, big moment. But now this new album, you know, mm -hmm. I already told, I told her like my favorite songs on the album and I was like... <laughs> I was like, wait, I was going to tell her like one or two and I sent like four or five. You did. And I've been listening to them every day. Aww. And I, I think now I do, I still have to say Not Mad Anymore is is probably my favorite. Really? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, I just I love, love I love that, I love songs that change in like the middle or like. I kind of unexpectedly yes. a bit. Yeah. Because then it's Thank just you. like, it's just like bomb like it's just different <laughs> it's bomb it hits yeah it goes mm. uh, 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 yeah the uh, chorus gets uh, you <laughs> yes like amazing so um well wow. well i need to talk to you about okay how you really got started into music and go back in time a little bit because mm -hmm. you know i'm trying to get where you are so give me give me the rundown give me the the tips how did you get to where you are how's your song in this huge movie you're going on tour like how did you just start because i i think you auditioned for american idol too right when like, i was a baby like yeah so i was now, i was so little look at you you know let's go back in time uh, we'll go back in time <laughs> uh you know i i feel like I wish there was that, like, I got hit by a car and then I knew I was going to be an artist. Like, there was never that moment that was, like, especially, um, like, mm -hmm. a like a massive revelation or something. And I, I just sort of, you know, the way I grew up, I had really good upbringing. And then, like, around high school, things got really um, sort of chaotic and, and toxic and a, mm -hmm. a, a lot of, for a lot of reasons that I can't fully yeah. share because it's just like life and family that mm -hmm. it affects them too but mm -hmm. um it was just it was really good for me I needed to get away sort of as far away as possible and I music was the only thing that made sense to me so I picked music school mm -hmm. it wasn't like okay now I'm gonna be this big deal and I'm gonna go to music school and I'm gonna be famous or something like that I was just like I need to get it away from home 
And then school mm-hmm. was just like amazing in so many ways, but I was like the least Berkeley famous. Like Berkeley's a pretty like uh, astute like music conservatory yep. and like I was lame. Like I never got picked for any of like the big music showcases and all these wow. things. And I was like, it did not set me up to be like, you're gonna be a star. I was like, shoot. So I kind of left school being like, I'm good at writing songs. I'm gonna move to Nashville, and I'm gonna write songs and see if other people want to sing them. Wow. And so it the whole I feel like my whole story. Up until like mid Nashville was just like I guess this works maybe I'll try this and mm. I guess this works. And you just really kept doing it like just kept doing it. it and music's just the only thing that has made sense to me or has sort of been a stabilizing thing in my life and which I think it is maybe kind of cheesy and what a lot of artists would say but also <laughs> I think it's true yeah. and um, yeah and then school like school was good but didn't lead me down an amazing path. Nashville was great, but also I was just like, I was supposed to be an artist. And I think that Mm -hmm. I didn't know it, but Mm -hmm. like the universe was like, all right, dude, like taking me in that direction. Oh, I love that. And so, yeah, at some point mid Nashville, I was like, I'm sick of sharing my stories for someone else to say. Wow. Yeah, that's deep. It's just like, don't, I want to, these are my stories, you know? And then. And you're the most talented person ever, so. You can sing your own dang songs. Like. I would say, definitely not ever, but thank you. I, I definitely was like, I have something unique to say, and I feel like I have a unique way to present it, and mm-hmm. um, I don't need to, like, why not me? I feel like that's been a big, and I don't know if this helps you at all, but, like, mm-hmm. we get in our own way of, like, well, someone else is more talented, or someone else can write a better song, or someone else can sing better. There will always be a better singer. Mm-hmm. There will always be a better or diff- different yeah, artist. Totally. And I think that we end up holding ourselves back by being, like, well, let them get it. Let them mm-hmm. reach their goals and, and get Let them successful. sing my song. Let them sing my song. Yeah. Until you're like, why why not me? You yeah. know, like there's no there's no reason why it can't be me. Yeah. I've work harder than most people I know. Yeah. I write more than most people I know. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm gonna just go for it. Doors are opening mm-hmm. and you're you've met like so many people along the way. And you've now worked with a lot of these people on the album. So, like, how mm. did you get to be meeting certain producers or, or other collaborators or songwriters or anything to, like, because obviously putting a project out is a, it's a project. And it yeah. takes a long time. And to find the right people, like, was there anyone, so two questions kind of, how did you meet the people that you collaborated with on this album and get, you know, associated with everybody? And then, like, was there any songs that you or people that you had worked with that just didn't make it on this album? Mm, ooh, the gas. <laughs> um, well, first, I, you know, I feel like there's a sense of like, um, like all boats rise together. Like mm-hmm. I met Phineas like four years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, my my co executive producer of the album, I met him three years ago. Okay. Like, a lot of these people are relationships that I've been fostering for years. Yep. And I think that there's, like, there's a lot of, like, very instant gratification in our Mm -hmm. culture right now, and we want things to happen and to click, and I think, like, Moral of the Story is a good example of, it was out for a whole year. I, yeah. Before, like, anyone cared. Oh, wait, you want to know a funny story about that? Yes. Real quick. So... (laughs) Like, me and my manager, we have been together for, like, eight years. And, like, mm-hmm. I started – we started music technically together. Like, we were we, – you know, he – he um like, was an agent before and everything. And, like, we were basically, like, doing this music career, like, together. Like, you know, figuring it out. Oh, that's cool. And I remember I had this song out. It was called Can't Say No. And it was, like, one of my favorites. Like, like I just knew, like, it had something. Like, and I, like, mm-hmm. believed in that song technically. But – like a year and a half later, I released an EP and like you were one of those reasons I had sent him like two people. And I was like, Aww. this is like exactly what I'm saying. I was like, you can put a song on an EP or a project or whatever years later. Like look at mm. Truth Hurts, look at Moral of the Story, look yeah. at all these other songs that like 
if you like believe in it, you can give it another like. Hump. It can have another life. But yeah, I was just I was just saying that like that was funny that like I knew that your song was like a year old. Yeah. But it's still it's still getting bigger. It's still like a favorite. That's nuts. Yeah. Yeah, and it definitely did not. That's not what I would have chosen. Mm. You know, like I probably would have picked for it to pop off. Yeah, like the day I put it out. Yeah, that's what you always want for your yeah. music. You know, and I think, I think we are so used to like an instant gratification culture mm -hmm. that like when things take time, mm -hmm. whether it be like cultivating relationships in the music mm -hmm. industry or putting out a record that you've been working out on for a long time yeah. or waiting to see a record that you've already put out get some shine. Yeah. I think that in my experience and in my life and my career, that's just ne that's never been the way things have gone. And maybe that's made me a more resilient mm -hmm. artist in ways. Nothing has ever, ever been handed Nothing to me. Nothing good comes easy. No. It's hard. And it's not like, you know, now, so Moral of a Story came out, mm -hmm. and a year later it gets put in this movie, and yes. then has this moment, yes. and changes my entire life. Oh, 100%. Like my entire career is completely different. Jeez. So I put out this album, this I'm like first now. body of work, I'm like, hey! But even still, there's nothing like, I mean, I'm still toiling and, you know, figuring out ways to like, how do I get my fans to love this music and mm -hmm. how do I get them to like, you know, accept it and mm -hmm. and there's, it's never gonna just be like, click and make sense always mm -hmm. for me and I think I just have to like accept that with my career and that's my cross <laughs> yes. to bear. Yes. But I, I'm really grateful for it. I think it has made me pretty resilient and, and I make music that I like mm -hmm. first. I definitely, yep don't make music that I think other people are going to like. Yeah. I hope that they're going to like it. <laughs> yeah. And and after it's out, then I'm like, okay, how do I market this and how yeah. do I make it accessible and, yes. you know, how do I promote it in ways yep. that it might get heard? Yeah, but. so, like, speaking about, like, promoting and marketing, like, are you in the creative seat? I mean, are you in the driver's seat with all of that, too? Like, what goes out and how do I promote this? Mm. Where how do we pay for this or do we need this billboard? Like are you in are you in that seat too? Like you got it all? I'm definitely in that seat. <laughs> I'm learning to let a little bit of those reins go because mm -hmm. I recognize that it's not all healthy for me. Yeah. Plus it's like I am also at a point in my career where I'm getting if I'm if I'm too in charge of like the strategic marketing and the business side of things, I'm getting in people's way of mm. like getting the job done. Mm. Um, and I end up and like And some people hindering. have those jobs. Like you said, like you're an artist. Like, yeah, it's their job yeah. to market. And yes. it's their job, like whether they be at the label or my publisher or mm -hmm. my like my press agency. Yes. Like I'm not going to know how to do their job better than them. Yeah. If it comes down to, again, creative, like 1,000% I need, even, even if it's like strategic marketing business, but but like creative is involved in that, okay, then I need to have yes. a say. But it's, I'm using my hands a lot. <laughs> You're good. They can this. see you on YouTube. <laughs> Check it out. Subscribe. <gasps> Subscribe. <laughs> rate this five star. Wait, yeah, do you do I that on YouTube? On, you can rate <laughs> it five stars on Apple Podcasts, and they can add us to their Spotify library. Oh. <gasps> Oh, you can. Oh, yeah, because it's on audio, baby. You can. You can go like this, and then the, the headphone users will love you. Oh, do you like this? <laughs> do you like Steve. This? Steve hates it. Steve hates the ASMR. Why? <laughs> it's so good. It feels so. Oh, he's <laughs> cringing. <laughs> Wait. So, fun fact: most home remedies and over-the-counter acne products don't work. Uh, like me trying to do those nose strips and basically crying because I have to peel them off. And definitely didn't consult with a doctor before I did that. So that's why Apostrophe is here to help. Apostrophe is a prescription skincare company that offers medications that are clinically proven to help clear acne. Simply fill out Apostrophe's online quiz, snap a few selfies, and a board-certified dermatologist will help create a customized plan just for you. That's what I did. Apostrophe treats acne and 
they can also help you hit your other skincare goals like reducing redness, wrinkles, and even dark spots. Right now, save $15 off your first visit with a board-certified dermatologist at apostrophe.com slash Jordan when you use our code Jordan. That's J-O-R-D-Y-N. This code is only available for our listeners. To get started, go to apostrophe.com slash Jordan and click begin visit. Then use our code Jordan at sign up and you'll get $15 off your dermatology visit. That's A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E dot com slash Jordan. And use that code Jordan to get your dermatology visit and save $15. And we thank Apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast. I want to talk about like your TikTok for you page again because like ASMR made me think about it. <laughs> what What are you interested in on your for you page? What are you what are you like? What is your videos like? Oh on it? I love talking about this to, with people. The only I swear, other than me all, dancing, other than you, it's you and then this one <laughs> other girl, um, Selena, something boo, oh oh Spooky oh, boo, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. something like that. She like she sleepwalks. Yes. And she ta- like she videos it. I love it. And she's like, and then has all these other fun videos, and her personality is just like, yes. I don't. She is electric. It's basically the two of you. And I am <laughs> so in love. We just started DMing on Instagram. Yes. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm friends with a famous person. <laughs> I I am like, she is the coolest person on TikTok, other than you. I don't course. think Steve knows who you're talking about back there. Oh he, my god! You need to get on TikTok. It's hilarious. She's sleepwalking and like getting eggs in from her fridge and putting them outside. in her bed. And like screaming at her boyfriend. It, it sounds like she's being like possessed by a, other entities. Like it seems like it really does. Someone Especially, is like taking over her body for a little and while. And it's all like night mode camera too, like black and white, or like sometimes it's like green and it's like yeah, uh, yeah it like literally honestly like she I could definitely be in like a horror movie. It's so it funny. Is. She it gets is. on the floor and she's like <laughs> Like, oh, I don't know. So it's basically her and yeah. you and then just random, random shit. I don't even know. I, I love should, it. I wonder what would pop up if I went. Should I look at uh, yeah, what would do pop it. up? I'll look too. Watch it be you. <laughs> I'm, I'll be so embarrassed if it's you. That's really Mine's funny. Bryce Hall. <laughs> Bryce Hall. Oh, this guy. Parker James. No idea. Oh, Hey now, that's gross. What are you? Are you a duck or a goose? This guy. You know one of those gooses? You're real cute, you know that? You wanna be in the dino club? <laughs> what did you just say to me? I've never seen this. <laughs> I've never seen this. I don't have a big mouth. You got that big mouth. The, the guy <laughs> has the old Snapchat filter but, everyone would like do. I love it. He uses it all the time on all his videos, and it is. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, he it's he, he he holds a dinosaur. I don't know. So that's like your next um, your next TikTok is with the. With the I like mouth. really. I like the really goofy sort of like off kiltered people. <laughs> on what else pops up here? I don't know who you are. <laughs> oh, a, an ad. Emma Stone uh, yep. as Cruella. <gasps> Which side note? Oh my god. <laughs> are you ready for that? I love Emma Stone. Um, and I just think that if I met her, I would cry. Aww. And I I hope that she is an avid listener of your podcast. Oh, she totally is. Duh. Who, who isn't? Can you imagine if she's like, you know, I'm not really into podcasts, but there's this one. Jordan Jones. And, like, that Ash music girl, she was just on it. Like, I love her. She's, like, really insightful about, like, the music industry. And I got so much out of it. I rated it five stars (laughs) on Apple Music and saved it to Spotify. I love that. (laughs) <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, marketing we, genius. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I, I need. I really need to hire you. Like, I. I want. I seriously. <laughs> I seriously want you to just like. I want to. Is it like a prodigy? Is that what it's called? Like, I just. I just want to be like. Just you know, when you're not um, stressed out and busy, just just trail me around with your life, and Aww. I'll I'll just I'll sit in the back seat, you know. Oh. I got no. I got a shotgun. You have a <laughs> mass. You have a huge big life. You know, you have so you're never not doing something. Yeah. If I'm on your Instagram, you are always up to some shenanigan. I mean, my LA life. I am so like I'm honored that you 
no. are like inspired at all by me, but you are like you have a big, big life and obviously a huge future. And like, oh my god, thank enjoy you. the moment now. Like yep. you're in like a sweet spot mm-hmm. right now yeah. of like the excitement and living in LA yes. and like or in Anders. Yes, but like yeah. you know the the LA like crazy life now because like when I like lived here, you know, I just didn't appreciate it. And like yeah. I didn't like hug it. Like didn't I didn't hug, hug LA. Hug and now I'm life. hugging LA. Yeah, I That's hug good. LA. <laughs> That's my next song. I'm hugging LA. Well, before we wrap up, <laughs> I need to I need to ask you the name of the show, and again, I want you to promote the album, the tour. Ooh, Give them ooh, all the ooh. sauce right now. Your Instagram, everything. Name of the show. Oh, before you give the name oh, of yes, the show. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like, I, have, I have, like, my last question before I'm fan confused. questions. I'm <laughs> confused. Um, okay, all the promo. Yes. I, I'm going on tour. I'm going. We are um, going to Europe mm-hmm. and UK in the fall. Mm-hmm. Um, and then all across North America in 2022, April and Mer- March, too, I think, a little bit. I am going to Phoenix and L.A. Dude, because, you yes. know, I live both places, so, like, I just gotta, gotta get back here. Just call me. I'll put you on the list. I'll sneak you on the no, list. No, I'm buying. I'm supporting get you out through of here. through the roof. Well, if you haven't bought, they're sold out. So, <laughs> well, the Phoenix one is a couple oh, days ago. Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix one is still available. Get Phoenix. Yeah, <laughs> okay. please sell okay. Phoenix out. I will buy Phoenix, and then I gotta hit you up for LA <laughs> show. Even though that list is gonna be like. Oh I'm, my I'm, god! I'm, I'm not relevant enough for the LA show. I can sit. LA is gonna be really yeah. Tough. There's two nights though. Two okay. nights at the Fonda, so maybe I can sneak. Or in like there. Orange, or like you know, I can just fly to Texas. You know, I don't care. I yeah, just... literally any day except for LA. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't do LA. Okay, so you get me on the list for Phoenix, and then I'll try last minute StubHub on LA show. Phoenix. I got it. Phoenix. Yeah, it. I can't. Yeah, get that. Get that show sold out for okay. me. Okay. Um, so right here, everyone that's listening to my podcast, I know a lot of y'all live in Phoenix. Because because I see y'all in public, so everyone was yeah. To this. And I think Denver, Denver's like right behind it. Um, we have two nights in Denver, and Denver needs to sell it. It's tickets, Denver needs so. love. Promo, promo, promo. Go hug Denver, okay? Go hug Denver. I think that's all the things. Yeah, the tour, the album. My first album's out, Ashlyn, which I'm really excited about. And then um, that's I'm just gonna keep you know, getting ready for tour. I'm playing Lollapalooza this year. Oh my god. Yay! That's gonna be cool. Man, Chicago. Yeah. We'll see. I don't know. Her life is amazing. Keep updated on her Instagram. <laughs> also, I honestly will keep you guys updated too since I just, I literally like share everything that you do because obviously, like, I wanna support you and for coming on my show. Like, I just wanna be like, you know, everyone just love her and support Aww. her. So. You can also stay updated on my Instagram to know what she's up to in her life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people love you. If I can get everyone who loves you to love me, I will be very famous. Oh, I love just, I'm going to steal all the people that love you. Whoever's totally listening fine. to this, I'm cool too. And if you love her, love me. Love me. We're both blonde. Yes. We're, we're, we're both, both like hot. very short. We're both we are short. hot as hell. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> okay, so the name of the show is What They Don't Tell You. And now, Ash Music. What is one thing that they don't tell you about being a recording artist? Oh my god! One thing they don't tell you, boo boo. Stop laughing at me. <laughs> I feel like they don't tell you a lot. <laughs> they don't tell you that you're gonna be underestimated for most of your career. They don't tell you that you're gonna get a lot more no's than you're gonna get yeses. Maybe they do tell you that, but you don't listen. Yeah, um, you don't listen. No, I don't listen. Um. Yeah, those are some big ones. Yep. They don't tell you that you're your own worst enemy. Mm-hmm. That's a big one. Yeah, that's really, really true. I get my own way more than anyone else does, mm-hmm. I think. That's probably a good one. Yeah. Like, getting out of your own way is, like, really important. Dang. Me. I took that real deep. I appreciate it. Is that though. okay? Yeah, because we're gonna bring it right back up. We got fan bring questions. Bring it fluffy. Go we back got to fan fluff. questions over here. All <laughs> okay. right. We asked on Instagram. This is gonna be wrapping it up, y'all. Her fans went crazy. We got about. We're gonna do like ten questions. You know. Cute. Rapid so, fire. Ooh. Well, this one's so like conceited, but it's what was your first impression of me? Oh. 
Oh, <laughs> I love that. Okay, my first impression. I, I, thought, I have no idea. I, I have no idea. No, I haven't told you. <laughs> I know. I'm about to tell you. I My first impression of you was that you were like a go-getter. Like Ooh. you were like super bubbly and fun, but Ooh. like you are in, you are large and in charge Ooh. of your, of your shit. And I think that's really cool. I, I was like, she is a businesswoman. <gasps> yes, that's right, Steve. You hear this? Yeah, that was my first impression. I love that. I'm glad. Do I, you feel that way? I, so I feel like You're my like, friends no. <laughs> will be like, oh, she's so like crazy and like wild and out of it and like, you know, fun, I guess. But then, like, people who, like... You're calculated, though. Yeah. You are thinking about everything you do. Oh, yeah. Like, you are so calculated. I'm very, like, growing up, like, literally on, like, TV and on, like, sets my whole life, I've always been like, okay, you know, what's after this? I, I got to be on time. Mm-hmm. I got to, like... I've always been, like, ahead, 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 ahead. Like, rush, yeah. rush, rush. So yeah. I feel like... That is the, the only reason of why I am like, like the way I am. Always on the go. Like when I'm working, oh my god, like I am working. If I sit at my laptop, I am I am there. I'm working. I'm focused. I'm that. But then like once it gets past ten o'clock and I'm with my friends, and that's like the only side that they see of me. It's like yeah. this girl's wild and crazy, and like <laughs> you know. So it's, I have like different for sure personalities. But I yeah. definitely when I'm working, I'm working. Yeah, Probably like like you, like everybody. So I that's guess. good. It seems like you have a good work life balance. Yeah, I do. That's important. I have focused on that, and I feel like a lot of, like, people that I, like, look up to, too, like, they are only work, and I see them just being miserable. Mm. So I try to be, like, yeah, you know, fine, I get invited, I'm going to go. I'm going to – I never got, like, high school. I never got college. And, like, so I just – when I'm handed, like – like a Six Flags day or like, you know, to hang out with my niece and go swimming. Like, mm-hmm. I don't like to turn those moments down because no. I never got those. So I do try yeah. to have like a good balance because I don't want to be miserable and depressed and like wanting to do drugs in two years or like a year ago. Like, I just don't do anything and I feel like I yeah, don't gotten... do drugs. Yeah. Don't do drugs. Don't they're do not, drugs. they're not cool. Um, I think that's amazing and I think that's really inspiring because mm-hmm. I think that probably to a lot of kids who watch you they probably are like I think people look Mm -hmm. up to you and want the same they Mm want to have fun but they also want to have success like you've seen a lot of success in your like young Mm -hmm. life you're not you're not an old lady like you've seen a lot of success in a very short amount of time which most people don't get Mm -hmm. to you know and I think that's really cool and to show people that like also have fun yeah that's good that's what we do here Work okay. hard, play hard. This one's a random one. Okay. Do you sleep with socks on? Ew, that's no. <laughs> gross. If you do that, you are not allowed on my podcast. No, I'm unless my I mom have, does. I have a really gross feet. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fun share. I'm never in shoes. I'm like almost always barefoot unless I like have to go out into Me public. Too. So my feet are like disgusting. And so once in a while I have to like lube them up and put socks on and sleep with them on and it is so disgusting i don't know how i don't get kicked out of the bed but i love it how is it working with niall horan is that one of the questions because probably that's in there okay <laughs> let's just go right ahead because honestly i think it's like i screenshotted that one but now i'm on like the the actual ones yep how was that it was great <laughs> <laughs> like, I know that's all people care about. <laughs> the title oh of this video. God. Yeah, this girl. That <laughs> Just not even my name. The Phineas and Niall Horan collaborator. End of story. End of Blonde podcast. Girl. <laughs> Blonde girl. Moral of the story singer. Knows famous people. That's all you guys care about. I do. I do love him so much. So mm-hmm. I don't, I, you know, I don't want to make him that look bad. But um, I was incredibly grateful to work with him. It was lovely. He was very funny. End of story. Moral of the story? Okay. Moral of the story. He's great. Drinks lots of beer. <laughs> what was the hardest part about writing your album? Ooh. Mm. <laughs> writing the album. Um, I mean, I I just am very honest. Mm-hmm. I share all my whole album is just my life. I named it Ashlyn for a reason you know it's like after me so it's just my life which is like sometimes easy for me to be vulnerable and write about and then other times it's like ooh, really hard life stuff it feels a lot better when it's in a song than talking to me on a podcast about 
if like mm. if you were to sit here and, and literally read your lyrics as if we were having a conversation versus in a song, it's well, completely different. Yeah. It's crazy. No, yeah. 100%. So just writing the album is her answer. <laughs> what was the hardest part of writing the album? Writing, writing the album. album. <laughs> All right. We'll do like two more. Okay. What will be the best song to perform? Ooh. <sighs> I feel like not mad anymore, actually. Yes, girl. It's definitely going to be one that's going to be so fun, especially when the chorus ooh, hits. Oh, also, I'm mm. fine. I think it's going to be fun. Back and forth. Always is going to be fun for me because it's like my belty moment at the end. And Love I get it. to like sing. And that's fun. But yeah, I don't know. All right. We'll see. Are you going to give us any hints on special guests for your tour? <laughs> <laughs> Niall Horan. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know. I don't know that I know them. <laughs> You're I, like it's like nine years. We <laughs> like know we're gonna pick people, so I think we put special guests on the list. But I don't know that I actually know who they are. We're still picking people. I think. <laughs> Love it. We we put special guests because we don't know who the special guests are. <laughs> Love it. Sorry. All right, you guys. You heard it all here first. That's it. It was a pleasure to oh. sit here with you. I, um, I'm i seriously, like, obsessed with her, you guys. If you have no idea, like, who she is until this podcast, just go to your streaming platform and A-S-H-E, <laughs> she's the best. Blast it with your friends and go to her tour, Phoenix and Denver. <laughs> yeah. Phoenix and Denver. Phoenix and Denver. Please sell them out. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much again for coming. Thank I you. I am so excited to see your tour. And watch you live um not from my phone anymore so that's awesome <laughs> but um yeah thanks for watching everybody thanks for listening on the streaming platforms and i will see you guys next thursday with a new episode Woo! Bye. Bye. Thanks, babe.